All right, carrying on with our next question. Question 17, the first cloud formations you can use to indicate the bearing of the center of a hurricane or tropical storm are what? And your choices are regarding the convergence of cirrus clouds, the direction of thunderstorms on radar, the darkest points of the clouds, and the point of origin of alto stratus. Well, what they're trying to get at here is kind of B and C are indications that you're very close to the hurricane. And we're looking for the first cloud formations you can use. Um, so if you were to draw a hurricane as just a big low pressure center in the northern hemisphere, it would circulate that way. And right around the edges of the storm are going to be all these bands of thunderstorms. And they're going to radiate outward in pretty much all directions on the order of hundreds of kilometers. Um, and then as you get further and further away, you know, if this storm was kind of moving towards you, if you were up here, the first instance you would see is kind of these cirrus clouds high in the sky. And you can see an image of what they look like in real life, but you can see that they kind of converge towards the center of the low. So that's what they're getting at here. You know, if you were in a different location, if you were over here, the cirrus clouds to you might appear to converge towards the center of the low. So it's not a very good question, in my opinion, by the Coast Guard, but uh, that's where they're getting at. The first cloud formations you can use to indicate the bearing of a hurricane is the point of convergence of the cirrus clouds. The next question on here is the light list indicates that a day board is of type November Bravo. What should you do? Well, in um, the light list, they show you this image of uh, these day boards that have no lateral significance. One of them is type November Bravo. So it can be tricky because it's a black diamond, but it's not a black triangle. So that's easy uh, to get confused. Um, it's not part of a range and it's not the correct channel. It's a, it's a day mark of no lateral significance. It's generally kind of like an X marks the spot thing on a chart. So I haven't seen a lot of them in my time uh, on the areas that I've sailed. They might be out there, but uh, according to the light list, November Bravos have no lateral significance. They're day boards, so you won't see them at night, and they mark um, information for, they're for informational purposes uh, navigating by. All right, the next question, number 19, which of the following is a boundary between two air masses? And your choices are continents, isobars, fronts, and lapse rate. Well, three of these have to do with meteorology and weather. Continent doesn't really, I guess. Um, so it's not continent. Isobars, those are lines of equal atmospheric pressure. So if you were to draw a uh, low pressure system and a high pressure system on there, uh, air wants to generally move between areas of high, from high, ple high pressure to low pressure. And you may be familiar with seeing these kind of gradient lines on a weather chart. And what these refer to is uh, the general pressure of the atmosphere. So everywhere along each line, the atmospheric pressure is the same. So you might see numbers like 1,016, and then that's the highest pressure around, and it's gonna diminish to 1,014, 1,012, 1,010, and then 1,008 for the lowest pressure around. Isobars are super useful. Uh, the spread of the isobars is directly related to the strength of the wind and the orientation of the isobars is directly related to the direction of the wind. So in this case, um, you could predict the winds around the low pressure system are generally kind of flowing just about like this, but also inward towards the low. And around the high, they kind of flow this way. So it's useful in that sense. Um, the question itself is what is the boundary between two air masses? So that's not what we're looking at for isobars there. Uh, the other incorrect answer is the lapse rate. And that refers to, um, it's called the adiabatic lapse rate. And it has to do with kind of how air rises. So if the uh, sun heats up some air uh, on the surface of the ocean or the land, it's going to form a general low pressure and it's going to cause air to rise. And the lapse rate has to do um, with rising air. Given that all the rest of the answers are incorrect, we're left with fronts 
But um, the other thing you may have seen on weather charts is associated with a low pressure system, these half circles and these um, kind of teeth would be the other way around it. All right, so this is a cold front and this is a warm front. And the boundaries between them describe different air masses. So this is warm air, this is cold air, and this is generally colder than this air. So this is the coldest, this is the warmest, and this is the generally the normal air that's uh, being encroached upon. So these things right here, these fronts, uh, mark the edges of two air masses. And so that's going to be the correct answer. In this case, which of the following is the boundary between two air masses? It's going to be a front. All right, moving on. Number 20, the speed of sound in water is approximately what? And it's all having to do with how much quicker it moves than in air. So Bowditch is gonna be your friend here. You can see that the um, speed of sound is listed in air and then in water, you can see the, the exact figures, but roughly four and a half times um, the speed in water is faster than the speed of air. So that's useful for things like um, depth sounders Good there. Number 21, weather observations provided by each weather station include all of the following except. So looking at the answers, it's something having to do with the future and then temperature, barometric pressure and change in the past and visibility. So weather observations are put out by, you know, each weather station. They generally don't predict the future. So it takes a forecaster to do that. So you, you see weather forecasts all the time, but the observations provided by a weather station are all stuff that's happened in the past or is happening right now. So temperature is a present phenomenon, barometric pressure is a present phenomenon or a trend, visibility is a present phenomenon, and then predicted weather is not issued by the weather station that's issued by a forecasting office or a meteorologist. <laughs>